What ethical considerations are there around knowledge mobilization and EL? EL experiences may involve student participation in sensitive situations where knowledge mobilization should be carefully considered and controlled. Some EL opportunities may be guided by formal constraints, such as privacy regulations or non-disclosure agreements. Others may not. In these situations where there are no formal restrictions, it can still be important to consider the ethical implications of knowledge mobilization to ensure that knowledge is still shared, but in ways that are appropriate and that protect others involved in EL opportunities. This is especially important when students are working with others in a service learning or international context. In terms of some of the policies that we have in place around this course, um, the standard Brock University policies around student conduct obviously are in place and academic integrity. Um, those things are all still fair game uh, for this course. Um, some of the additional policies that we have in place, and these are uh, pretty much across the board for all of our outdoor recreation courses, uh, would be uh, for students to be and instructors to be considerate of things like smoking, if they're smokers, where is the appropriate time and place to smoke? Um, if you're out on a canoe trip with people or if you're delivering the program to high school students. Um, in this day and age, it's difficult to ask students not to bring cell phones or music iPods or what, whatever devices they have with them. Uh, we strongly encourage students not to do that for a couple of reasons. Um, one, we find that uh, those devices get lost or wet or fall into the lake uh, and destroyed. Um, we also find that uh, there's no cell reception in many of the places that we travel, so um, it's difficult to use for normal use anyway. And uh, students sometimes still bring them for the camera function. Uh, and I think the biggest thing is that um, it really takes away from kind of that sense of community that develops within that small group and oftentimes uh, with the, f the phone policy, we find that students are a little reluctant to give up their phone or turn it off and put it in the bottom of their bag for a week. But one of the things that we hear in the van ride on the way home is that it's been great to be away from my phone and be unplugged for that amount of time. And we hear that even on three day weekend trips that we do in some of our other courses. So we have the photo release form, which, uh, yeah, uh, if we want to use people's photos for marketing purposes, uh, we have them sign that as well. Uh, and then we also collect uh, medical information. Um, and we recently changed our form uh, and, and the way that we collect that information to be uh, more in line with uh, some of the privacy concerns. But because of the places that we travel and the conditions that we uh, are in and the remoteness we are from medical help, um, it's important to gather that information uh, from both our university students and we also gather that information from our high school students so that um, during that experiential canoe day our Brock students can prepare for that appropriately. So that could be things like um, you know food allergies so the Brock students provide lunch for the high school students so if there's peanut allergies or gluten intolerances or lactose free concerns whatever the dietary restrictions are we have that information or if people are allergic to bees or um, aren't great swimmers. Uh, we try and gather some of that information so that um, we're prepared to handle those situations if they're um, occurring. It puts a heavy onus on the faculty in the program to be up to date. So I need to be able to fill in a lot of the blanks from a technical perspective that a client would typically fill in, but we don't necessarily have the time or the access to do that. We have a huge focus on occupational health and safety, but that would be a learning outcome of the program anyways. I would want them to be able to keep themselves safe on a contaminated site, and I actually feel better that the first contaminated site they're on, I'm there watching them, crawling them off the side, saying, don't touch that, don't smell that, don't, don't go near there. So in so many ways, it's so much more effective for me than just telling an abstract third-party story to be there on site experiencing it with them. So most definitely, it requires a lot of the faculty in terms of vigilance and in terms of, of their agreement to be client ready at all times. I think they want to see this as practice sometimes and I need a much higher level of performance in practice because we have a client with expectations on the other side of it. One of the projects that I had had uh, a few years ago was this big concept and it was uh, 
the they thought that the students could come in and kind of change the world with this project and uh, I didn't scope it out very well in the beginning I went in saying oh for sure we can do this and uh, my students can can definitely make a difference but once we started looking at it there were political internal external factors that were impacting this project and so really for a student to come in and drive some level of a change at on a project that had a bigger systems issue was really not feasible so I think from my end my uh my key learning from that is to really make sure the projects are scoped out to student uh, students' desires for being involved in a specific activity, uh, their skill set, and what's actually achievable. Because we want the students to leave as well, saying, you know, I was able to make a difference, even if it was in one student's life, or if it or in one patient's life, or maybe I changed a process that was helpful for the nurses. Uh, I want them to be able to say they did something, so they feel like they had that value add. So scoping the project is really, really important. It was important to prepare students for um, the potential that they wouldn't feel comfortable in every situation and uh, also to help them think about the ways that their presence was having an effect on the people that they were interacting with, um, especially if there was uh, a, any, any situation with differentials of, of privilege. Um, if students were interacting with um, members of um, cultural communities or with uh, vulnerable vulnerable people who uh, are receiving services because of their low income or poverty. It was important to encourage students to think about the ways that they might need to express sensitivity to people's situations. Um, that extended to issues of confidentiality sometimes. Uh, yeah, so I think the kind of risks that uh, arose in the course where students were entering different situations that um, could uh, result in discomfort or, um, yeah, um, could expose um, students in moments of disadvantage or expose other people who have disadvantages um, to students. Um, these risks were addressed by conversation because <laughs> it's the purpose of the course to open up the kinds of issues that undermine student participation or civic participation, the ways that we all have to uh, ideally take risks to cross cultural or class divisions between members of the same community. Um, yeah, and there are a lot of ways that um, divisions uh, or, yeah, interpersonal um, barriers emerged, including um, not just um, the obvious ones like um, poverty or, or race, but also age and um, disability.